Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this week's video, we are gonna look at some free little Max for Live plugins that you can use with Ableton to write some phenomenal little acid lines and even some other synth lines. But what we're gonna make today sounds something like this. <music> So let's get to it. So you would have heard in the intro there that there was like a little acid line and whatnot, but to make that, I just did it all via Max for Live plugins. So let's have a look at which ones I use. And I also used a built-in one from Ableton and I don't generally work with Ableton. I'm more in the logic side of things, just the way that I, what I started with, it makes absolutely no difference to the end product. But for cool little things like Max for Live, it's fully integrated within Ableton and it makes everything a lot easier to work with. So you can see on the screen, we've got uh, three little plugins. And many of you have probably already seen this one from Skinner Box called Sting, and it's a acid generator. So just so you can see what I've got going on in the session, if we open up this, these are just the drums that I brought in, nothing too crazy, just like a um, just 808 sort of things doing it, doing what 808s do. Um, it's just yeah, super basic. And then I have the MIDI where I'm generating everything. I have another MIDI track that is get, getting sent to the 303 and the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to be able to just record in lines. If I like the acid line, I can just record it in. I have channel one, you can see I have the output routed to MIDI two and then MIDI two is going out of my um, MIDI express and then it's going into the 303. Now that all of that garbage is over, Let's have a look what actually is making the fun thing. So here we have the the little 303 acid line generator. This, the little smiley face will, uh, will start the pattern again. So if I start it up, I have these both turned off. If I And it's pretty good if you just flick through, this will regenerate a pattern. This is how many notes are gonna be in that pattern. So you can hear there, it gets a little bit crazier. So in the intro video, I had it dialed down pretty low and then I had a delay on it as well. I honestly like the less dense acid lines, just, just personal preference. Obviously with transpose, you can change a link, you can put swing onto it, and you can change the, the, the lowest velocity on there as well. But that was really good and I was like, okay, cool. But then I was having to do a bunch of editing after it. So I was like, okay, what can I put on here to make my life a little bit easier? Because at the end of the day, these are just idea starters. They're not gonna, I mean, they, you might be able to write a whole track around it, but for me, I can just kind of flick through, kind of get something, I'm like, okay, that's close. Uh, now let's move on. And if you watch my first 303 video, you see how I kind of do the same thing. I just have all, had the 16 notes, and then I just take notes away, get the, the rhythm, and then I kind of push and pull notes up and down the scale to get that sound that I'm after. This will kind of get me out of that because I don't generally write acid lines like this. Well, I don't generally write acid lines in this uh, to produce this sound. So I was like, okay, cool. This would be a good way that I can kind of get out of my little hole that I've dug of way the way that I do it. I've got this, but I was like, okay, I want to be able to have a little bit more control over everything. So you can see I've added a 
little uh, scalar plugin after it. And if you're not familiar with Ableton, it's just a way that you can, I have it set to uh, a minor scale and then you can just change the, the bass note and then you can see we have the black and the white keys to make those changes. Um, and obviously you can transpose it and everything like that. So I've got that going on, but then after that, I was like, okay, cool. This is cool. Let's play it now. I'll increase the density because that's going to get us some more notes to work with and you'll be able to hear the effect a little bit better. So if we increase that. Okay. Let's get something that I like. So this is this is kind of good. This is going to serve the purpose of what we needed to do. You can hear those those high notes. Maybe I don't like them. Maybe I wanted the whole pattern to be condensed in the amount of notes that it plays. So that's where I found this MIDI Fold 1.0 plugin. So let's stop that for now because it's kind of crazy in the background. It has the same folding as the scalar, but with this one, so if I turn it on, we're gonna go through, and then through will let us choose the octave. Same, same as what the scalar would do. So. And you can see this is like the the, I guess the highest note, the, the highest note, the lowest note and the highest note. And then you can see the output of the, the lowest note and the highest note. So if I play that again. So you can kind of get an idea of how wide the, the amount of notes are and, and the, the difference between the, the lowest frequency and the highest frequency. But if you want to change that and you want to bring the top notes down and kind of compress the amount of notes in there, this is where the fold on here comes in handy. And then you can draw in your own little window. So if we come along here, and you can see I've got a little window here. If I... So I've made a pretty small window, so now if I turn it off, you can hear there's more going on. And then let's go with a different pattern. If we turn it off, you can hear it's moving, a lot more movement in there, but this one. And I almost feel like this is cheating, but again, this is just to get ideas going and whatnot. So once we've got it to here, we're like, okay, cool. This is kind of good. We can come along. We'll go stop. And then we're just going to record in that pattern. Cool. So now we have what we just wrote. So we take off record enable. So these are the notes that it gave us and we can just, we can just cut that little bit off the end. And if I come back to the start and then we're going to turn this off and we can record enable again. And then let's record in the original without the folding so you can see the difference. Cool. So let's just cut this in half. And we're going to consolidate. Oh. 
And if we look at it, you can now see, get a good visual representation of what's going on. So when we use that, that folding, we limited it to the amount of keys that it could sort of be within. And then all of these keys on the outside, these ones and these ones all got pushed in. So I found that that was a really good tool to kind of dial in the sound. Maybe you wanted something a little bit more driving and not so spacey. So this was a way that you could cut off sort of more of the higher notes. And another way that I've used it, if I bring this back down again, we can grab this, let's get it out of the way. And so we have here I've reduced the density way 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 down with it and now we have something that is just more of like a high frequency. Let's go again. So this could be more of an accent as opposed to a main line. So if you already have a chord progression going on. And that's why I had this filter delay. So if I go back to it again and then and I feel like that combo of the delay with the with like the limiting the notes kind of gets you a nice quick and easy like little accent bit in there like that there lastly I've just put in a little audio loop a little play it along so you can hear just a little a little uh, stab and I just have an auto filter on there just kind of dipping it down it was a little bit harsh but now if I bring in the bass line again so I just kind of flick through some presets and change the density kind of get something moving along with it I mute and then if I turn the MIDI fold off And that could be cool for like a little turnaround effect. So if I bring everything back in again. flexibility of using the the sting with the scaler and the MIDI fold to kind of give you more control over the whole thing hopefully oh lastly all of these are free so the MIDI fold it has a suggested donation so if you find yourself going back to it over and over and you you're using it maybe throw them a couple of dollars because someone did take the time to to make that and uh, yeah, that's about it. So hopefully you got something out of this video and you've got some more sort of tools to, to try out and test out in your own productions. I've also tested this with the uh, Audio Realism 303 and it works great as well. Obviously, you can't go past the original, but hopefully you've gotten something out of today's video and hopefully I've inspired you to create something. And until next time, see you later.